welcome to my channel and make sure you guys are subscribing today i have a design idea for you guys kind of sort of maybe um this is going to be two designs one i already previously painted didn't really like it and one that i accidentally serendipitously um created by trying to do marbling and it turned out with cowhide shape look at that so with this one, this is going to be the plan. I'm going to be using a B uh, mold version instead of me painting it this time because my proportions are so off. And I have other molds as well. That's a whole collection of B molds. I'm going to use this clay, glitter, and permanent adhesive vinyl. Okay. And I'm going to be using my some acrylic paint, some yellow ochre, and medium yellow. All right, and as for my cowhide plan, I'm gonna be using white and black, Amsterdam acrylics, of course, plaster of Paris for that chalky look, and burnt umber and burnt sienna from Lucas Creole Studio. Now, I mixed in my white paint with my plaster of Paris and some water, and I want that matte finish when I paint it, even though I'm gonna put resin over it, whatever. And I'm gonna do it in a couple of coats. And if you put too much water, it really thins it out. So try to not be as, try to be very cheap with the water and not put as much. Okay, very, be very stingy with the water. And I'm doing this about three or four coats until it's all covered. Then I realize that I've covered my design too much and I can barely see it. So now I have to go back into my video, watch it, and then see where my design plans are and then paint it. Look at the struggle I'm going through just to get this design that I accidentally made. And when I accidentally made it, made it, I mean that it just turned out that way instead of what I was trying to do, which was marbling it. And as I watch the clip of the video, which is just a freeze frame, I try to map out and see where they ended up and find the closest to the shapes, even though I can no longer see it on the plate anymore. And I'm really liking how this design turned out. Now I went ahead and added some browns for value and depth. And of course it kept sinking, you know, black is a very strong color. So it just kept absorbing all of the color that I was trying to add to it. But it still does give a tint of that brown for the cowhide. So it's not completely black, but if you put on a grayscale, you can see that you can't see any values in it, but black and whatever reflects off the light. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my more difficult one that's going to take longer because it has more of a process to it. And I'm going to go ahead and do my yellow ochre, medium yellow mixture, plaster of Paris and water. Paint it, let it dry right now start to work on my mold while it's drying and this clay slash play-doh texture is not working out for me um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use something else instead since it won't stay it's too soft and mushy so I'm gonna use UV resin use ultraviolet resin I put paint in it to get the B color I guess and I poured it in there what I'm gonna do afterwards I'm gonna sit it under ultraviolet light it's supposed to take two to three minutes, but I don't know if this UV resin just doesn't work or if I'm doing something wrong, but it wasn't curing, okay? So, not only is this process long, it's taking longer because things aren't working out the way they're supposed to. So while that went to go dry, I went in ahead and painted my third, fourth, I think I'm on my third layer for this one. It has to be the third layer. And I want it completely covered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it dry, put it aside, get my little honeycomb design here, and go ahead and use my, my transfer vinyl to remove all those innards. Now I'm not gonna waste innards. The inside part of the vinyl, I didn't throw it away. I put it on my sketchbook. So it didn't go to a complete waste. Some of it did though. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint my fourth layer. 
nice thick and chunky completely covered you can't even see the previous design on there let it dry a bit and then go ahead and adhere my permanent adhesive vinyl to it and it's not gonna to be too sticky it's not gonna stick very well and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the sides just so it can fit it's too small to fit all the way over to wrap around so I went ahead and cut it at the edges anyway and at the top part just remember that that portion is gonna be a little design on there so here is the portion that's gonna be lovely frustrating and scary and risky I tape the bottom so I can have my resin pour and for it to have an even bottom, I make sure that I put tape on the bottom so that way when I take it off, it's not all hanging from sides and everything. I'm using about three ounces of resin mixture and always remember, wear gloves and mix very, very well. This one doesn't need too much of mixing because it works well either way, but just make sure you mix it for about two to three minutes so that we can cure and not be sticky because I've learned the hard way beforehand. And as you can see, it's turning out really, really nice. I'm using this little mini spatula, or I call it a mini spatula for the edges. So we can have that nice smooth rim. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it for both trays. And I'm always making sure it's leveled. You can see it comes out really clear almost bubble free this is a really great resin so it'll be in the description below i forgot to show it to you guys and i'm making sure that every single portion of it has a smooth outward and no little splotches of resin and make sure making sure it's leveled as well and i did see a little nook and cranny of bubbles here and there so i did apply my heat gun to it um and I went ahead and smoothed out the sides. Usually I let the resin roll over the asthma the sides, but either way, whatever technique I use, it always ends up not smoothing out around the sides like it's supposed to. But the main character looks extremely great. And I decided to be a little picky and start putting, um, popping and taking out air bubbles, using the heat gun. It worked great on the right. It looks great. On the left, so I got the air bubbles, somehow more air bubbles formed. And then I went ahead and like, okay, maybe I should put some more resin before it cures. Maybe if I put more resin and then do air bubbles again, pop it out with the, blow the heat gun and look what happened. It just kept getting worse and worse. So my complete design that I love so much is now ruined. Now I'm left with, for hopes of this video, is a honeycomb design with the bee, which is turning out really great. But you never know. This is something I didn't practice before I started this video. Never know when your design might just get messed up and at which point it does. I'm at the point where it, there's no return. Because right now, if nothing else works out, it's ruined. So I went ahead and checked up on my B molds here. And this one, I did leftover resin. And this one was the one with the UV resin. And again has been ruined it did not cure and it's been there all night curing so what do I do don't give up go ahead and get your acetone out pour it in there clean out your little ooey gooeys and I'm gonna put real resin into these molds and then whatever ooey gooey is left in the creases the mold the new resin will pick that up anyway and cure it and it won't be such a major issue so that's what I'm doing now. I'm using my regular resin that has a very slow drying time versus a UV resin that I used before, even though it looks the same. And I'm pouring it right back into my molds. And if you have any excess, use all your little molds, whatever mold you can. You don't want to waste because you might end up using these again anyway, right? So I'm smoothing these out, making sure it's even kind of sort of trying to at least. I'm going to go ahead and set it and I'm going to wait till the next day because of course it was late last night and take it out and look they're just fine it came out perfectly and you know these are very detailed molds so either one i use would have been great even if i use a different design i would want it to go with the larger one because i really liked it and in the process what i wanted to do was take out all those little excess that's on the sides so here it is on the tray and the little excess on the sides i want to go ahead and take those out because it's like showing a bit 
We're not gonna look at that anymore. Stay away. And as I am taking out these little excess, guess what happens? I start getting limbs cut off because I'm using this stupid X-Acto knife. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm so frustrated at this point. I just took out all the limbs. We don't, we don't, you don't need limbs, B. You don't need them. Okay, it's over. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and color in the wings with my acrylic paint marker, Posca I'm using. And I'm also using the black one as well. And I'm coloring in my B using alcohol to spread out and take out any mistakes there. And there's my bee. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover it in resin as well. So on the bottom, I stuck it onto the tray with resin. And the same resin, what I did was cover the top portion of it as well. So that way it's sealed. And here is the final portion of this tray. And at this point, your tray can still very much well get ruined. I use a very thick amount of glitter because I want to cover that yellow up. I didn't use too much of that um, resin. I waited 30 minutes and it's a 40 minute cure time because I didn't want the resin to drip right off. I just wanted to have a stopping point. And I smeared it and it ended up drying and it kept getting harder and harder for me to adhere onto the tray. So as the sides didn't get the drip that I wanted to. So here it's drying very fast. And I took the bottom part out and look how it turned out. It still turned out great even though the sides didn't get the drip that it wanted. And here is the other thing. And for more, and if you wanna see me recreate that, go ahead and subscribe.